Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Crafty Concepts with Erin. I just got this paper pack, it's called For Always, and I'm so excited because anytime I come across a paper pack like this, I'm really inspired to work on my wedding album. Fun fact, we just had our 20th anniversary on June 14th, and I'm still not done with it, so, but yeah, this has me excited, so we're going to make some progress on my wedding album. This is called the For Always paper collection, and it is a current special out with close to my heart. This is the sticker sheet and it is very romantic, but you could use it for things other than weddings. You could use this for family, like legacy of love, moments in time. Those were the days, treasured moments, always in my heart. That doesn't have to just be your spouse. That could really work for a lot of things, but these are absolutely gorgeous. Love all the shapes and look at this. I love you because you make me laugh. You are always there for me. You see me, you stand by me when I need you. You inspire me. You listen and are a shoulder to cry on. You are my biggest cheerleader. I could use that uh, with a photo of my mom because she definitely, uh, you know, hits all of those uh, points there. So just, you know, thinking outside of the box, if you're not working on your wedding album 20 years later, there's definitely other things you can do. This is gorgeous. So we have a black and white color palette, but some of it, there's white and there's also vanilla in there. So you could really kind of go either way. There's also some mink. You get the distressing and you see that mink and toffee in there. And yeah, I think it's just gorgeous. So all of them are double-sided. I've already got them flipped over. Look at those doilies. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know I'm a big fan of doilies. And that's just stunning, absolutely stunning. The other side is this beautiful script and that has me doing a happy dance. Can you guys tell I'm excited about this collection? We've got some chevrons. The opposite side is this pattern and the zip strip, which is the branding strip. Look at this. Everyone says you only fall in love once, but that's not true because every time I see you, I fall in love all over again. So fun and pretty and perfect for romantic wedding layouts. And then this one here, it has almost kind of a lace in the background with the floral pattern in black and then that is the opposite side of this. So this is a bring back my pack special. This paper pack um, you know was introduced I don't know the exact year but it's been a long time and in fact I didn't get this when I um, you know when it first was released and I don't know why because it's gorgeous. There is a bundle option which gets you the paper pack, the sticker sheet, it also comes with these stamp sets. You can get things a la carte. So if you just want the stamp, you can do that. If you just want the paper pack or paper and stickers, there's a workshop, a scrapbooking workshop and a card making workshop. So this is the love doily and the doily is inspired by the doilies in this pattern here. And you know how much I love my stamps. And then we have some great background stamps. So we've got the diagonal stripe, the chevron, and then the florals. And I know I'm gonna be using this on cards to make quick cards. It's gonna be perfect to create some borders because you could go you know, on a, a horizontal landscape card or a portrait style card and that'll go all the way across. So that's gonna be really perfect for that. If you do get the bundle, there's cardstock too. So you get a couple sheets each of vanilla and black. And I separated these out because I wanna show you something really cool about Close to My Heart cardstock. So these are all colors that coordinate beautifully with this collection and they're double-sided. So you get, you know, the dark version, this is rosemary on one side, and the lighter version of the color on the opposite side. So I've gone ahead and flipped them over and you can see it's really like getting double the colors from what you're really getting, but you have options. And I love to create layering with the different tones. And I think that that is just such a cool feature about their cardstock. So that's all the coordinating cardstock. It's rosemary, desert rose, toffee, and and missed. I have a single photo of my sister and I at my wedding. My sister was my maid of honor and I really love this and you can tell my wedding colors were black and white and red. Now we have desert rose in this paper collection and that's okay. The thing that's so great about this pattern here or these patterns is they're predominantly black and white. So you can pull in any accent color you want. And even though Desert Rose isn't really, like I might not really feature the cardstock, this is 
has enough red in it that I think it's going to accent my page uh, really well, but we'll see. I may not use any of those and just stick with these colors. But this is the photo I want to document today of my sister. This was, there were a couple photos taken that day at the wedding, but this is my favorite. So I want it to be its own layout. Clear these up. We're going to do some stamping on the background with that doily stamp because it's just too good not to use. Since it is a single page layout, we're just going to have one verse mat today. I thought about using this script paper as my background because I could still stamp the doily on there and it would show up and even do some stenciled leaves and whatnot, but I don't know. Maybe I should go with just a solid piece of vanilla cardstock here so that the stamping and the stenciling really shows up. So I'm kind of picturing just building up paper layers here, having some background stamping, and then we're going to go with some florals for embellishments. I need to determine which papers I want to use here. So I'm thinking I love this one. And again, we're going to bring in lots of paper layers. So we'll just have bits of papers all kind of stacked up framing in the photo. I do like that one. This floral one is gorgeous, but you know what? The picture doesn't, I mean, I'll mat the picture, but I almost like the photo better with the more, um, the less busy background. So that tells me I can kind of make this one the first or base layer. And then this one would be the next layer on top of it. And then I'll mat this in cream. Yeah, I think that's going to be good. Let me cut these down. I cut this one down to three and a half inches by 12, which I will shorten once I figure out where I want that. And then this one's five and a half. So three or no, five and a quarter, excuse me, three and a half and five and a quarter, just in case you like having the measurements. This one's going to be in the background. I did mat this on vanilla. I decided to go with vanilla. I could go with white and some of my layouts have white, but my dress is actually a off-white color. My mom was just insisting that redheads look better in off-white rather than stark white. So <laughs> I don't know. I love the dress and it worked for me. But yeah, see how that one just kind of pops better against the more uh, solid background as opposed to the floral. I mean, it would work either way, but I think this is going to be good. So I will eventually shorten these, but I'm not sure where yet. I'm thinking for my title, I just want to go with sisters. I know that's kind of generic, but I can see it just real scripty font kind of underneath. But let's play with this doily and see how this is going to look. So you can always take the stamp and put it on your layout to see. Now this does not have a coordinating die, so you can stamp it right onto your background or you could fussy cut it out. Be careful pulling these off of the sheet the very first time, especially because you can tear stamps. It's hard to do, but you don't want to, you know, you just want to be gentle and coax it off of there. It's on there pretty good when you first, uh, when it's brand new. So you could just kind of place the stamp, but you can also, this will give you the look as well. I'm thinking of layering this right out the side there. I think that's going to be really pretty. So maybe, hmm, we could go up top too. Mm, decisions. Maybe we'll do two in different colors. We could do one there and then another one sticking out a little more. Oh, I like that idea. You want to grab an appropriately sized block for your stamp for that to fit. And I always rub it on my arm, a hand or arm the very first time I use it. It just helps get those oils off from the manufacturer. And then we're going to stamp on some practice paper. I think I'm going to go with mink, which is a featured color in this collection for my lighter one. And then we'll go archival black in the darker one down here. When you're stamping, it really helps to have a foam cushion behind your surface. And the back side of the Versamat is foam, so that's perfect. You can also use this, but you'd have to move it around and make sure that you're in the right location. So now my whole layout is that way, and it's just going to make it easy. So what I like to do is bring in my paper layers where they're going to go, and then I can move them out of the way when I'm ready to stamp. Let's go ahead and start with the mink ink. I'm going to put that little foam square underneath my practice paper, and then you definitely want to ink it up and stamp it a few times, and that's gonna help you also get a better impression. 
So let's do that one more time here. Just make sure it is stamping nicely. That looks pretty good. I want you to notice something. If you look closely between my stamp and the acrylic block, you can see it better here, there are air bubbles. And you ideally, do you see it right there? There's several air bubbles. Those can interfere with the quality of your stamped impression. So if you are not getting a good impression, you want to kind of a position the stamp to work those air bubbles out. It's still stamped very well for me, but something to be aware of if you are experiencing any difficulties getting a nice crisp image. Always wipe off your stamp. You can either stamp it off a bunch or I like to use my stamp chamois. I keep that, you know, just in a little holder off to the side of my desk. And then we'll go ahead and ink it up in the archival black. And I do want this one out a little bit more. So we're gonna hold that up overlap the two stamped images give it a second to soak into the paper make sure we have a nice crisp image lift it up and you know there's a little bit in the center that didn't stamp perfectly but that's okay because i'm bringing in some embellishments to that area as well plus the distressed look kind of goes along with the layout now this is a stencil from the dream maker collection there's four different squares on here some people have been cutting them into individual squares i just kind of left mine whole but i think these leaves might look really pretty I want to add some subtle background texture and interest. So I'm gonna have this kind of coming out from my embellishment cluster. I know I'm gonna be bringing in some paper flowers later. So these leaves are gonna come out from under the flowers. This is close to my heart um, tape. It's a low tack tape. And I don't wanna have to worry about inking up those other images. So I'm gonna tape those, mask them off just so I can quickly go over this with my blending brush and not have to worry about getting it in areas I don't want it. I'm using mink ink because I want a soft, subtle look. And then we're just gonna add some of these leaves and I want them a little bit irregular, darker in some areas, lighter in other areas, and um, just kind of get this distressed, faded look. The bristle brushes are great because they give you this nice soft application and you can always add more color uh, if you want them darker. This stamp set, I have been having so much fun with this. It is the Dream Maker stamp set. There's all these different little texture stamps on here, but there's this text stamp. There's a couple different ones and they're like scripty writing. I'm gonna use my fingers. This is something I learned from my friend Jema and I just want little bits of it and I'm stamping directly through the stencil. So we're gonna get this script uh, font pattern only in the leaf shape. And I wanna lift that up, make sure it is turning out okay. And I want it, I'm using my fingers rather than a block because I want more of, I don't want this perfect image. I want it kind of faded and missing in areas and just looking a little bit uh, worn. Let's go ahead and see how this turned out. You can always put the stencil back in place, but ooh, I really like that. That is just what I was envisioning. Isn't that pretty? I can go ahead and flip this back over because I'm done stamping for now and then bring back in my paper layers here. I still might bring in a few more you know, pattern papers, but I'm not 100% sure. I do want to tear the bottom of this. So I'm going to leave room for the title and I wanna go down on a diagonal. So I know my title is gonna fit in this space here. So I'm just starting a few inches down and then working on a diagonal angle. I'm being very careful because I want a, you know, strategic angle here. And if you rip fast, you might, you know, you don't have control, <laughs> you might get kind of a wavy pattern. And I wanted it pretty, uh, you know, straight going on the down. I'm thinking we need a few leaves up here. I am going to create another little floral cluster up in this corner. So I do want those leaves on the base as well. And there are smaller leaves on this same stencil. So that really plays into the design nicely. I really enjoy using stencils and they're relatively inexpensive. They don't take up a lot of room in your craft space and it's just kind of a win-win. You can use them in so many different ways, change them up like I'm doing here by adding the stamping. Lots of different uh, techniques you can do with stencils. 
Let me go ahead and slide this back in. In my wedding album, I do have a page dedicated to all my bridesmaids, but since my sister was my maid of honor and of course my sister, I just want a page for the two of us. I'm going to add some more stamping. So I'm gonna slide this under because I just have a little section here. And I'm using the same Dream Maker stamp set and the archival black ink. There is another text stamp on here that has this really cool kind of, you know, distressed edge. It's an irregular edge and I love the way this looks. I've been getting a ton of use out of this stamp and I like that but you know what I think? Mm, yeah let's do another one. Let me slide this back under here and I'm going to bump this one in a little bit and because of that irregular edge it really is going to lend itself well to this look. So I'm lining it up and bumping it in to the left so we get this kind of diagonal line from the top to the bottom. I went through my die collection and I have the 3D floral die here. This is an older one. Anything that's still available, I will leave listed in the description box below. But that is a layering flower. And then of course we have the layered flower dies. I love these. I'm gonna use the leaves and this smaller floral image here. I have selected scarlet and then rosemary and vanilla to create my embellishments. I'm gonna cut the leaves from rosemary and then the smaller flowers from the vanilla. And then I'm gonna use the lighter side of scarlet. You can see there's the dark and then the lighter side. I'm going to cut several flowers from the this scarlet paper. I wanna make these flowers a little bit more interesting. So I'm gonna bring in my all-purpose mat. This just is a nice surface to work on. I can easily clean it up. It protects my desk. It's a win-win. Here are my scarlet flowers, and then I've got the vanilla ones. These do layer, so I cut several pieces. And then I have the same color in ink. This is scarlet ink and a blending brush. And I want the color darker around the edge and then fade to kind of the lighter vanilla in the center. You could have just cut these out of scarlet paper rather than ink blending them, but I want a lighter tone and I want it different from the large uh, scarlet paper flowers above. Plus, I'm going to add some stamping to these as well. I always appreciate the flexibility too. You can always switch up the colors to match your wedding colors as well. I have my uh, other verse mat and I flipped it over so we've got that foam backing there. And I'm going to bring in archival and that seam black or text stamp that I added the background stamping to on the layout and I'm going to stamp right over these flowers just to give them a little bit of character. You could do this with pattern stamps as well. You can do all sorts of things to add a little character to your paper uh, floral embellishments. I tend to work in odd numbers. So I have three of the smaller flowers and then I cut enough layers to create two of the larger flowers. So together that'll be five uh, to embellish my layout. Now, when you layer these together, there is a very distinctive little petal making that pretty easy, but I thought it would be fun to add a little detail to the center. On the Dream Maker stamp set, there is a tiny little splatter stamp and I thought that that might make a nice floral center, just a little detail there. Let's see how that looks. We'll bring that back in. And yeah, I like it. Sometimes I'll just try one to make sure I'm happy with it before finishing the rest. But you do want to use a liquid glue when you are adhering your layers. And it is even fun to layer a few up like this to create a little bit of dimension between the outline and the base. So it's easier just to stack a couple die cuts rather than add foam tape. Plus, it's a great way to use up little bits of scrap paper you have lying around. You can just die cut extra pieces and hide them underneath. I am using the Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. This is one of my go-tos when you're, uh, you know, need like a precision point. And I also love the Tombow uh, liquid glue as well. To make these scarlet paper flowers a little bit more interesting, I'm gonna shape the petals. You can do this with your fingers, and I'm just kind of curving them up and training the paper. And I've cut two of the smaller layer here, and I'm gonna offset those to create a flower. But I thought, let's sand these as well. Close to my heart, cardstock has a white core, so you can do some really cool sanding techniques. And I think this is gonna just kind of go along with the look of the layout better and just give a little bit more uh, dimension to these flowers. So I'm using a plain old nail file, just going around roughing them up um, on the edges and on the points of the uh, higher point of the petal as well. Glue them down, 
offset the flowers and then we'll come back and do a center later. I did do the same distressing treatment to this one. Now here I have three layers because it is a larger flower. One more thing I'm gonna do to these larger flowers just to really step them up is add some clear shimmer brush. I know it's hard to appreciate the sparkle on camera, but these are really, really pretty. So we have shaped them and then we've sanded them and now we are adding some sparkle because you know, if there was ever a time for sparkle, it would be a wedding layout, right? You can just brush this on and it. Uh, if you need more glitter, make sure you shake it really well. You can squeeze it out on your all-purpose mat and then kind of pick it up with the tip, which I do recommend. Don't squeeze it over your paper. You might get a nice big blob where you don't want it. These don't take very long to dry, but while we wait for them to do so, we will add some dimension to our leaf here. Now, again, this is rosemary paper, and I'm folding them just down the center. They do have a really cute little stitching detail die cut into them, but I saw Chelsea doing this over on her channel, and I've done this before and just kind of got out of the habit. I'm like, you know what? I really like that. So thanks for the reminder, Chelsea. And uh, it just adds just a little bit. Now it will kind of flatten out just a bit in your albums, but surprisingly it does retain some shape. I think these are looking pretty good. We can go ahead and start embellishing our layout. And I am envisioning a floral cluster here. That is why I stenciled those leaves and then one up top. And you'll notice I use the larger flower on the bottom and the smaller one on the top of the layout. And I just thought for one, there's more room, but it just has a little bit better balance. When these leaves are going to be hidden, I like to tear them and then you can use the individual petals elsewhere. Mm, I'm gonna leave that one whole. Sometimes I'll die cut a bunch of these leaves and then tear all of them apart and then use them with the smaller flowers, the little individual guys. Let me go ahead and bring this back into the center here. And then we can find a spot for these kind of tucked underneath the larger flowers. And yeah, that looks good. Maybe go one right here and then we can use a single leaf. Might as well use it. And maybe a couple, there's just a set of two I separated out. I think that looks good, we'll go with those. And then I've got one more flower. We could put it here. Nothing is adhered down yet, so I can kind of take it in and make sure I'm happy with it before committing. I did create a couple versions of the title. So this is a font called uh, Hello, and I do like that one. This one is a little bit more scripty. This is called Amalfi Coast. They're both from defont.com. You can download those for free. Hmm, I like that one. But this one works as well. Mm, let's just kind of live with this one for a little bit. Looking at the sticker sheet, I decided I did want to use this. And in the beginning, I mentioned that is Desert Rose, which has some browns in it. But that is why I chose the Scarlet for my red, because, you know, there's blue reds and orange reds and reds with more brown in them. The Scarlet color does, I mean, it's red, but it does have brown. So it actually works really well with that Desert Rose. I am gonna do some more stamping, so we'll flip over our Versamat. I'm gonna bring some scratch paper just because I'm stamping off the edge, and I decided I wanted to bring in more of this really cool text stamp here. So we'll do one up top, and then the same technique, we're gonna bump it over to the left so it kind of goes on a diagonal down off the page. Now we can layer some embellishments over the top of this stamped area. So let me flip my Versamat back over and then we'll bring in this sticker from the sticker sheet. Now you can um, have it lined up from the top, um, but I might trim some of that off as well. Here is another sticker, a little decorative black circle. And I thought I wanted to bring in some of those rosemary leaves. I love to repeat colors and elements. And even though we don't have a flower up here, they still look cute. Now these are from the Cossette collection. They are the Cossette die cuts and they are like this vanilla color and I thought the shapes played along really well. There's hearts and butterflies, leaves and flowers, all sorts of neat things. So I just kind of want to go through here and see if there's anything that might look nice with this layout. There's lots of these tiny butterflies and they have that kind of text stamping already on them. I'm gonna just ink up the edges to uh, help them stand out a little bit more since it's kind of a tone on tone. I like the butterflies, those look very pretty. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue those down. 
just a little dollop of glue in the center of the butterfly's body. And then I'm making sure to rotate them in different directions. Now I do need to finish off these flower centers. This is something I originally learned from Julie. Just put a little dollop of liquid glass and then I have these tiny little micro beads and I'm not sure if these are still available, but they are really cool. They're great for shaker projects, but they make these beautiful floral centers. So I'm just using my paper piercing tool to push them into the pool of liquid glass. And once that dries, it'll be this beautiful shiny beaded finish. There's actually very little pattern paper on this layout. It's primarily background stamping and a little bit of stenciling and I had so much fun putting this together. If you found this video helpful or inspiring, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. It does help me out quite a bit here on YouTube. Don't forget to check the description box below for all the supplies I used. If you're looking for more crafty inspiration, then check out this video right here. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon here on YouTube. Bye.